Today on what it's like, a little bit different. This car belongs to a viewer of the channel. Thank you so much for giving us this amazing opportunity to showcase your car. If you're sitting there at home watching this and you want your car reviewed, if you live in the Western Pennsylvania region, Eastern Ohio, Panhandle of West Virginia, maybe Southern New York by Buffalo, I, I might go to Michigan. Drop me a line in the comment section. But anyway, we're here to feature this 1982 Ford Thunderbird. But before getting into it and diving in deep, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotic, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. If that sounds of interest to you, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Also, if you like this video as well as this channel, please give us a like so more people can see this video in the future. Let's talk 1982 Ford lineup. 1982 Ford offered a plethora of different models to choose from. These aren't in any particular order. Ford XP, Ford Escort, Granada, LTD, Fairmont, Ventura, Mustang, and the Thunderbird. Wagons were offered in the Escort, Granada, and LTD. Let's talk 1982 Thunderbird. Let's take a step back for a second and talk about the Thunderbird. Ford offered the Thunderbird from 1955 to 2000 in 11 generations. 1982 falls in the eighth generation, which was produced from 1980 to 1982 model years. This generation of Thunderbird was redesigned to be smaller in the interests of better fuel economy and emissions, built on the Fox Body platform. Some other cars that were built on the Fox body platform, including, but not limited to, the Mustang, Granada, Fairmont, Mercury Cougar. I know there are others, but those are a few that were built on the Fox body platform. The Fox body platform was used from 1977 to 1993, and it was replaced with the SN95 platform for the Mustang for the Thunderbird Cougar Mark 8. Ford would go to the MN12 platform. The Thunderbird for 1982 was offered in three flavors and or series. The Thunderbird series, which was the base entry level Thunderbird. Next up was the Thunderbird Town and Landau. And then at the top was the Thunderbird Heritage series. Let's talk 1982 Thunderbird specs. 200.4 inches long, 74.1 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 108.4 inches, weighs 3,000 pounds, price $8,495, which is equivalent to you spending $26,081.50 in the year 2022. It's also worth mentioning that these cars are all front wheel drive. The Ford Thunderbirds are. Total 1982 Ford production was 950,301 units, of which 45,142 units were Thunderbirds. Let's talk engines. Starting in the basement, 200 cubic inch displacement in line 6, 3.3 liters, makes 87 horsepower at 3,800 RPM, 154 foot-pounds of torque at 1,400 RPM, with a bore of 3.7 inches and a stroke of 3.1 inches. Compression is 8.6 to 1. This engine has seven main bearings. It's built from cast iron and has a two-barrel carburetor. Moving to the middle engine, 232 cubic inch displacement V6, 3.8 liters. It makes 112 horsepower at 4,000 RPM. 175 foot-pounds of torque at 2,000 RPM. Bore of 3.8 inches and a stroke of 3.4 inches. Compression is 8.65 to 1. Features four main bearings. It's built out of cast iron. The block is, and it has an aluminum head. On to the top of the heap. 255 cubic inch displacement V8, 4.2 liters. Makes 122 horsepower at 3,400 RPM. 209 foot-pounds of torque at... 2400 rpm with a bore of 3.7 inches and a stroke of 3 inches compression is 8.2 to 1 features five main bearings is built from cast iron this is the engine that is in our featured car moving on to transmission only one transmission on offer four speed automatic overdrive or aod for short hey right, let's talk about this door panel just check out all the different materials used nice big door handle here this is the armrest. This is the door handle to shut the door. Here is the unlock and lock 
button there. This is the door handle to get out. This is the window crank. And just look at how this window is designed. Notice the door frame. And this controls the mirror. It's toggle switch style mirror. On to the button switches and knobs. Starting all the way left and moving right. This is for the headlights. You just pull the switch out. Moving on to the main instrument panel. In the center is the gas gauge and then surrounding it is a bunch of idiot lights. Starting with the brake light, then there's a blank panel. Not entirely sure what that one's for. If you know, put it in the comment section below. Fasten seat belts at the bottom, amp, high beam. In the center of the two gauges, kind of making a partition in the center, are the drive select modes. Park, reverse, neutral, overdrive, third, and first. Notice the needle. Well, it's more or less a line than a needle, but notice it's blue and it matches all the other blue outlines of the rest of the gauges. Just to the right of that is the speedometer. Notice 85 miles per hour or 140 kilometers per hour. Odometer at the bottom left-hand corner, tripometer in the bottom right-hand corner. Coming back to the center, clock just below that, the climate control settings, just below that, radio, and at the bottom, ashtray. All right, coming down here inside the pedal box, you got the emergency brake, brake pedal, gas pedal. This is the hood release. Here's what over the hood impression looks like. Here's what first person looks like. Lots of room underneath the steering wheel. And if there's not, this one's got tilt wheel. It's over here on the right hand side of the steering wheel column. And that's how that operates. There's a couple more stocks coming off the side of the, um, the left hand side of the steering wheel column. This one controls the back one controls the uh, windshield wipers. The one in front of it controls the turn signals. And check this out. So the horn isn't in the center of the steering wheel column, but it's actually off to the side of this. You push this in, and that's what the horn sounds like. Cruise control settings, on and off is right here. Resume, set acceleration, and coast is right there. I love the steering wheel has this wood ring around it. I had a Lincoln like that. It's, it's nice, nice quality feature. Up here, there's a bunch of like idiot lights. If I turn on the key, turn signal indicator for the left-hand sides over there, temperature, oil, and the right-hand side turn signal indicator. I'm gonna go ahead and start this up once. It's real quiet. All right, up here you got some sun visors. There's no courtesy mirrors, but the sun visors are nice. There's a courtesy mirror on the passenger side. Daytime, nighttime mirror. Back here, the dome light has a center light, and then there's these little small map lights off to the side. Let's see? And the big one lights up whenever the door is open. In the center, I got some nice armrests. You can move these out of the way, and it would generally be a seat, but I'm not sure it could be a seat in this car because you got little change holders at the end here. It would be kind of, it wouldn't be very comfortable to sit there. All right, getting into the back seat, you just push the seat forward. This is how much space you have. You gotta move this out of the way so it doesn't get you when you're trying to get in the back there. I'm sitting in the back seat. Headroom, um, my hair, my hair is a little bit big. If I cut my hair, I'll have more space back here. But there's enough room to put my hand in between the, my poofy hair and the top of the ceiling. Here is how much space, knee space we have. Knees are kind of inside the back of the seat, but this is a small car. Over here, you can see the profile of the seat. It's more of a reclined style seat over here there's a nice armrest these windows are fixed coat hook up here over here same thing there's a nice coat hook here armrest the back of the seat has an ashtray but there's only one ashtray 
it's right here and on the uh, back of the driver's seat on the back of the passenger seat there is no ashtray there is no center armrest back here but there's a center bulge you see how this bulges up it's very interesting back to the trunk here you can see how absolutely massive it is We've got all of our cleaning stuff here full-size spare underneath this cover lots and lots of room this is for the gas filler the gas filler is on the opposite side it's right here for the gas attendant to fill up your car when they used to do that To the under the hood section there's a lever inside here you just kind of sort of pick this up a little bit and then move it to the left and there it is it's got a dual master cylinder with power brakes power steering air conditioning On to the pros and cons. I generally get the pros and cons from a book from childhood called The Complete Book of Collectible Cars, but this car isn't in there. So I don't know how complete this book actually is. So I made up a list of pros and cons on my own. On the positive side, it has that big luxury car ride without being big. Super comfy, long trip or long haul seats. These seats almost have that feeling of your favorite couch. Cons. The owner was telling me that parts are getting harder and harder to find, especially body slash trim parts. On to name that tune. First person to give me the correct name of the band as well as song title will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, toodle!